SexyHackers.com Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Hello everyone and welcome to Who Let Me Read This, the podcast where a group of Milwaukee artists and avid readers gather to discuss the inappropriate books of our youth, well, some people's youth, um, and (laughs) discuss how it has colored our view as adults and our very large therapy bills, larger than student loans, some of them, I think. I don't know, I have a lot of student loans. I don't know. (laughs) They're not that expensive if you never pay them back. Uh, well, uh, nah, just kidding. <laughs> hey, I, I paid the extra half percent or whatever, so they're forgiven if I die. So, Oh, nice. there you go. I, I was thinking ahead. Nice. <laughs> I just consolidated and um, refinanced the, my last chunk, so I'm almost done. I'm, I'm really <laughs> excited. These are the things we talk about in life now. Yep. Buckle up. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, speaking of buckle up, get ready for our, our third episode of Judy Bloom's Blubber. Holy oh, cow. Yeah, we needed like a week to calm down. Oh, yeah. In between there. <laughs> um, yeah. Whew, goodness. I just um, went through things for a while. <laughs> yeah. Went to one of those like smash rooms. Ooh. Took up kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, you know, we're a pretty ragey group. Um, so speaking of our ragey group, so <laughs> sitting directly to my my, my right, uh, the Hulk, Andrea Radel Schrader. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to go, let's see, kickboxer, probably closest, that'd be Black Widow. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Zarya from Overwatch. Something like that. Yeah. Someone who right. smashes things. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I was really I'm really Marvel focused. You were good. I got access I'll take to it. my sister's <laughs> Disney Plus login. So still don't, have don't one tell yet. Disney. <laughs> They right. know. Oh, we said Disney. They're on it now. Yeah. Ah, they're watching us now. The Is that outrageous. all you need to do to make them watch your podcast? Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> say their name. That's all you got to do. It's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> but you get it's sued. It's like Beetlejuice. If you say it a third time, you'll get sued. Oh, man. Um, Miss Bianca Brandolino. Sorry. Hi. I forgot that part. <laughs> Uh, and Sarah Wallace, our co-producer, and oh gosh, would you? You're kind of you're kind of Iron Man, I think. Oh no! What? <laughs> you you okay. have the best snide remarks. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Fair, see. witty. Yep. Can I be Loki then? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> actually, accurate. <laughs> Down to be Tom Hiddleston. Right on. Yes. Snap. Awesome. Uh, and we are we are covering a particularly touchy book today. Yes. At least I know it's sensitive for me. Um, so a little heads up for everyone. Yes. Um, little content warning heads up um, for Blubber. Uh, this is a book that deals heavily with bullying themes. Um, there is a lot of uh, very descriptive um, kind of graphic descriptions of bullying um including some um kind of intense physical bullying Mm -hmm. uh that happens so just make sure you're in the headspace to um to engage with our uh podcast before before you you listen to it we are going to be discussing um both the events in the book and some at times may um talk about other bullying uh, all their bullying related events. So oh, awesome. Thanks. Intense themes. Mm-hmm. You bet. And to catch everybody up, if you have not been listening. Uh, so over the last two weeks, we, we met our, our fifth grade narrator, Jill, our protagonist, um, and her bullying classmates, Wendy and Caroline and her best friend, Tracy. Uh, and then the target of all of their bullying, Linda, who they just call blubber cause they're assholes. Um, uh, and it's simply because Linda gave a report on whales. That's it. That's what sets it all off as like all kids. Um, it's the tiny things. So they, the girls and their classmates really take every opportunity to harass Linda and they trap her in the bathroom. They tease her. They assault her. They make her say, I will be blubber forever or refer to the girls as queen Wendy and curtsy before she can get a drink of water. Um, Pretty terrible stuff. Uh, Jill then goes on to prove she's just an overall 
terrible human being um, yeah by vandalizing her neighbor's house and linda's house and writing blubber on her sidewalk jerk um and just generally being a huge brat to her parents and to her brother who is delightful he's kenny is delightful read this book for kenny (laughs) and throughout all of this no parent no nanny no teacher no supervisor no one seems to either notice or care that anything is going on that Mm -hmm. this is all just normal kid stuff um and i think that's the bigger problem maybe it's not that they don't notice it's that they just don't care Mm -hmm. yeah Wow. So that's where we wrapped up and all of us kind of went and hulked out. Um, yes. Just oh, yeah. raging um, if this had <laughs> happened in our childhoods. Um, and to start off this week, I'm sorry, it's just going to get worse. It's, mm-hmm. I would love to yeah, say it, it gets worse before to, it gets better. But it just it gets worse. It just yeah. gets worse. There's mm-hmm. no better. So they start off, Caroline and Wendy decide to make a list. Um, mm-hmm. It says, how to have fun with blubber. And it's six ways to torture Wendy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. Including her maker say she's blubber, the smelly whale of class of 206, uh, lifting up her skirt, making her kiss a boy in class. Uh, Bruce, who they said was the, the fattest boy in class. Mm-hmm. That was it. Um, and then holding her down to force food down her throat. Mm-hmm. Yep, they made her made her eat like a piece of chocolate that they told her was like a chocolate covered ant, and then yep. she barfed and got in trouble for barfing. Yeah, which as kid. someone who did at one point barf in class, mm-hmm. yeah, I think all kids do. Mm-hmm. You don't punish a kid for getting sick, no. right? It's rough. It's not. Oh, that's not okay. Right? You get to see more of Jill's sociopathic tendencies because then they're like. They're asking, like, what made her throw up, and uh, she tells the adults, as you would think would be effective, Mm -hmm. like, they made me eat a chocolate-covered ant, and all of the kids are like, no, she's mistaken. She didn't, we didn't do that. We know that she's on a diet, so we wouldn't offer her chocolate like that. But she wanted the chocolate, so we told her it was a chocolate ant, because we didn't think she would eat it, but then she did. Like... Right? We were trying to be supportive of her. Terrifying. Ugh. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and some of these in, in the descriptions, if you guys ever want to to like just read a clip out of there to get the full effect of this delightfulness. Yeah. Um, I actually want to read the um, the list, How to Have Fun with Blubber. Wow. Um, Ooh, the things that are on their list. Chapter. Number one, hold your nose when Blubber walks by. Because right, the teacher won't notice that. Right. Number two, trip her. Three, push her. Four, shove her. Five, pinch her. And six, make her say, I am Blubber, the smelly whale of class 206. Wow. Okay, first of all, two Uh, of those are the same thing. A full four of those are like physical assault. Yes, just attack her. Yep, that's it. Just go after her at any point. Anyway, and then they find a bunch more ways Mm -hmm. to terrorize her. Uh They just find a bunch more. Why not? Yep. Um, So after all of this, there is a thing, and I guess this used to be pretty common in schools. Um, The kids all line up to be weighed. So there was like health checks of stuff. So they checked for like scoliosis. Scoliosis, They checked your lice. Well, and and we did that, but you'd go in one at a time, and they'd... Like, do your height and your weight, and they check you for scoliosis. I don't think they even told you any of it. They were just like, ba-doop, ba-doop, ba-doop. Mm, yep. Nope, you're good. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Get out of here. But, but they do it, like, in front of the whole class. Yep. Like, the whole school is all lined up to get weighed, and they're going to announce it to everyone. Um, and not just a number. <laughs> oh, that's, that happened that to happened? me, too. I'm sorry. This is our sound engineer jumping in. That That's terrible, Jason. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, humans. So they, yeah, not just announce a number, but specifically what you should do about it, that you should, that you are a little overweight, or in Jill's case, she's a little underweight, which she is also, that's like a moment of shame, where this is the turning point that Jill could have started to redeem herself, of realizing, I also have a body image issue, um, and something that she was just, you know, uncomfortable with, and that could have been the moment where she went, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe Does I should. She though? 
But she doesn't. No. She no, sure doesn't. She just gets upset that now she has to drink a malted every day. Yeah. Which like I also milk. like have a lot of criticisms about her family's like lack of doing anything about what clearly is some sort of food issue with her where like all she eats is peanut butter yeah. sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like your child yeah. needs nutrition. Like yeah. <laughs> they cannot live on peanut butter. <laughs> like they literally yeah. had, like um I I think we'll talk about it in this section like she brings her own food to a a gathering because she won't eat anything other than peanut butter sandwiches. Yep. And I'm like, this, your child needs vitamins. Yep. <laughs> like what just, is happening? Yeah. Right. Just make them eat the food. Oh right? my goodness. Yep. Um, and then, uh, during all of this, you know, there, of course, all the kids are teasing each other and Donna, this is the horse girl. Yes. Um, Donna is the horse girl. Oh, yep. just kidding. I think I said a couple episodes ago that Donna is not involved, but she is involved. She is. So I yeah. retract my support. She starts for Donna. out okay. For the yep. beginning, she was pretty <laughs> decent. And then she was just like horses. What's up? Yeah. But, <laughs> um, so Donna sings a rhyme and I, I highlighted it here. Oof. Um, to to them and she says this was the the jumping rhyme she used to sing to the fattest counselor at her summer horse camp which like that is ouch that is intense you are bullying the counselor of the camp you went to yep Mm -hmm. the person who's there to take care of you and make sure you're safe and having a good time um and so she would she was singing to her oh what a riot blubbers on a diet I wonder what's the matter. I think she's getting fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter. Pop. Um, and it's followed by Bruce, who is the other chubby boy in class, seemed to enjoy jumping to Donna's rhyme best of all. It suits him even more than Linda because he weighs over 100 pounds and his whole body shakes like jello. He's the one who should be on a diet. Wow. Thanks, Judy Bloom. Hate it. Hate it like so much. Triple reinforce, like. You know, hey, Linda's overweight, but Bruce is even worse. Yeah, just yeah. in case one. you didn't get enough of the fat phobia with Linda. Yeah, let's They're introduce children. you to Bruce. Yeah, like I hate yeah. it. I hate Kid, it a lot. Kids are all different weight and all different sizes, and you're gonna grow into your sizes. And little kids always look like I always say, um, little kids look like they have the penguin belly. They're just smooth. Like they don't really have a nest <laughs> at that age. Mm-hmm. They're just like little weeble wobbles. That's what all children look yeah. like. It's and like I'm a, like, there's really there's some like kind of awful stardom early kind of fat phobia in this too, yeah. where like you start a kid worrying about their weight at that age, mm-hmm. and that's gonna like years fuck up their relationship with food and with their body for decades. It is years and years and years of rewriting your brain to not have those ticks and those perceptions you're allowed to eat what you want to eat when you want to eat it and when you don't want to eat it that's fine and a lot of the food policing that happens in this book is a lot of stuff that like i definitely saw in myself in people i cared about in my mother um it's 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 a little it's a little rough (laughs) yeah it's a little rough and anyone who's been a larger weight growing up can can attest to some of the treatment that these people have and the saltines and having yeah, people is. watch you eat and how that feels yeah. yeah yeah well and you get like the super yucky reverse as well where like we see jill who genuinely has like potentially like An unhealthy disorder. issues yeah. with food yeah and it's totally fine and it's a joke where like she literally gives other people her food because she won't eat it and that's okay because Jill's thin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's all it's so all, deeply troubling. It's still disordered <laughs> so, eating. Yeah, it's yeah. the worst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's still a po- un, like it's still a negative relationship with the thing that's supposed to nourish you. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But because one little girl is thin, then it's funny and a joke and like and it's okay. Teehee, she just eats peanut butter versus any of the children that are heavier than then it's a problem. It's like, right? No. Yeah. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> nope. I remember right. that really specifically. It's such a bizarre memory of when I was little. Um, I knew I wanted to be a stand-up comic. I thought that would be so cool. So to do it, I decided to research it. 
Because that's what you do as a kid when you're a nerd. Yeah. Um, I made a point to go through the HBO specials and like circle when the stand up comics were going to be on. And I was going to sit there with my notebook and take notes on how to be a comedian. And this was like fourth grade, you know? And I like, I was watching them into like trying to write down the things that I saw. And the first thing that I wrote was making fun of fat people is funny. And then I stopped <sighs> because I was like, I don't. I don't get it. I yeah. don't, but it's, but that's what they just kept doing. Mm -hmm. And they kept going and kept going and kept going. And I just didn't write anything else. And my mom was like, how's it going? I'm like, I don't like this. And like, and it, and it stopped, but it was, it was such a bizarre moment that that was my idea is that was comedy, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and still is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, just a bizarre moment from my childhood and remembering that. And on that super cheerful note, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> That's all this book is, is like sunshine and puppies, rainbows. Those. And somebody kicked the puppy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. The rainbow's I'm... on fire. The sunshine. Speaking of rainbows. I was getting a sunburn. Right. And... <laughs> uh, but well, let's take a moment to breathe and say thank you to uh, Sexy Hackers TV for giving us this cool space to talk about these things and get all this stuff out out and, and review these books so it's not just trapped in our brains um so make sure you hop on over to their website and check out the other cool podcasts with lots of other fun content i think we're the heaviest ones of the content <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of fun stuff on there um check everybody out make sure to like and subscribe we'll be back in just a second sexyhackers.com Hello and welcome back to Who Let Me Read This. Uh, we are diving in. We are full in. We are swimming in Judy Bloom's blubber. <laughs> oh, that sounds bad. Oh, no. Oh, that's well, unpleasant that's mental sounding. image. <laughs> well, you know what? Fine. We're all uncomfortable. You guys should be uncomfortable. This <laughs> book makes people uncomfortable. Yep. So yep. it definitely did not have its um, targeted goal it no. did it did not achieve what it was supposed to do yeah. um which i actually i have a, a little quote from the author here uh about <clears throat> what, what it was supposed to achieve so judy bloom you might have you might remember from your childhood of um you know having written tales of a fourth grade nothing super fudge are you there uh, it's me are you there god it's me margaret at least those were pretty common ones that I found at garage sales as a kid. Um, but she wrote Blubber um, specifically for, uh, let's see. So according to Judy Bloom, in a short essay published in the recent reprint of the novel in 2014, the plot of Blubber was inspired by a very similar real-life incident involving her daughter's fifth-grade class. And she says, my daughter was the shy, quiet girl in class, the observer, like Rochelle, who we haven't met yet because she's just kind of in the background. Um, she was upset by what was going on, but didn't know what to do about it. She was scared. Like many other kids in that class, she was worried she could wind up the next victim of bullying. Bloom also explained that she wrote Blubber to encourage children who see bullying take place, as well as the bully's victims themselves, to tell someone they trust rather than keep it to themselves. This book is supposed to be an anti-bullying message and show kids the dangers of bullying and what could go wrong and how to do better. Not even a little. And it fails. It so is hard. so terribly. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, <sighs> man. Um... Wow. I especially like the bit of like that you're, you should tell somebody you trust rather than keeping it to yourself. Because we see that like a bunch of times during this oh, book yeah. of like adults either directly being told what's happening or seeing what is happening and doing Nothing. absolutely jack shit about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not at yeah. all. And I'm curious, though, as you know, as we're talking more about it, we're talking about Jill. And um, I think some uh, theme we see in a lot of our books is the unreliable narrator. Yeah. Yeah. Of... How much of this is Jill's perception? How much of this, you know, because she thinks very highly of herself. Mm -hmm. um, and to the point where her letter to the stamp <laughs> company. I actually, I have it marked. Yeah, Because oh I love it. So Jill is an avid stamp collector with her yes. best friend, mm -hmm. Tracy Wu. 
they write and you know put them into her books and such she saves up she even makes sure to like not bite her fingernails so she can earn extra money to buy mm-hmm. stamps um and at one point she receives a letter from the stamp company basically complaining that she doesn't spend enough money um, well and this to me the the <laughs> stamp company letter to me sounded like the it, it, it's like netflix asking you if you're still watching yeah yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. you good? You haven't done anything for a while. Are you still there? Yeah. And so she gets this letter that says, Dear friend, what's wrong? We've noticed that your last few purchases from our approvals have averaged less than 35 cents a selection. We certainly do not want to waste your time by submitting selections of stamps that have such little interest to you. So let's hear from you. Tell us what type of selections would interest you. Please use the reverse side of this note for your suggestions. Sincerely, the Superior Stamp Company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I'm sure is their like boilerplate for anybody who is not purchasing yeah, a, a lot, lot of stamps. Just, yeah. Is there something else you'd like to see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so she turned the letter over and wrote, or sorry, it's first person. I turned the letter over and wrote my reply. So Dear bad. Superior Stamp Company. If you got 50 cents allowance a week, you'd have trouble ordering a lot of stamps, too. (laughs) Besides, you are not the only stamp company I deal with. You are not even my favorite. Half the stamps you send don't go in my Master Global album. So you are lucky to get any business from me. Unsincerely, Jill Brenner. Her name might be Jill. She's being a real Karen. Yeah. The stamp company. <laughs> Peak Karen moment. I love unsincerely. <laughs> Which, like, isn't that, isn't it insincerely? Like, yeah. oh, she's a, a fifth grader. I know, I, I'll forgive that. Like, but smarter and better she is yeah. than everybody. Let me dunk Apparently on this child, not. Sarah. <laughs> Feel free. Dunk on the child. I'm about it. And the outrage she has yeah. to think that she's like, well, Mm-hmm. How very dare you? Right? <laughs> How I can say all these things. And I think this just so clearly illustrates her view throughout the entire book. Yeah. Oh, that that letter really sums 100%. it up. She's like, I am better than you. I am smarter than you. I I deal with many stamp companies. <laughs> Which, like, she doesn't. <laughs> you're 11, Jill. Girl, you're 11. Right? I just, I picture her growing up to be, like, the stereotypical busy businesswoman from movies. Like, I'm very busy. I have my time. You don't, I don't have time for this nonsense. Do you know who I am? Yeah. She's (laughs) absolutely. queen. Yeah. Yep. Like, oh. She was relatable for one line, which I totally forgot about. Um, And then as I opened the book to this page, I was like, oh, that's right. So um, their nanny goes on vacation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so... Um, the last time the nanny went on vacation, their grandma came to stay and watch them. Wah, wah. And so she's worried that her grandma is going to come again. And <laughs> she says, grandma makes me so nervous. I get diarrhea just from being around her. And I was like, girl, all right. She got some nervous poops. I, I, okay. Yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> But she's relatable for one line out of the whole book. What is <laughs> then she sends that letter. And then that's it. Yep. What does your grandma do that makes you so nervous? Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. my grandma. It just, it basically I know. seems like her grandma, like, pays attention to yeah. them. Right. Yeah. So that's if a problem for her. If parents were like, your grandma's yeah. going to come over and, like, take care of you every day after school, I would have been like, yes! <laughs> well, and that's, like, it loops back around because then we get great Maudie, who sounds rad as hell. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. And her she, great aunt her yes. grandma's sister who was like, <laughs> they have like let's a- do some yoga and like <laughs> eat good food oh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah and they have like an yes. intense the the grandma and great maudie have like an intense rivalry and it sounds <laughs> amazing it's another it comes down to like every time on this podcast i want to know the backstories of all of the other people in the book <laughs> right and, don't, and i'm like that, I book? that story i want yeah. the story about oh, great yeah. maudie and grandma <laughs> yeah um, like what happened what like split their relationship yeah why do they have such an intense rivalry there's mentions of like boyfriends and like Mm -hmm. there's just the they all sound like insane buck wild like old rich ladies who do whatever the fuck they want and don't care (laughs) like i love it i want more of grandma and great body if i have to read about rich people that's the rich people i want to read about right um and then uh yeah she gets mad as soon as great body actually like exhibits concern and pays attention to them and expects them to like do specific 
things because Jill's used Dare to just she. being able to do whatever she wants. Which is interesting because her mom, like, kind of lets her do whatever she wants and she still isn't nice to her mom. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. She it's, doesn't want you to be involved. She doesn't want you not to be involved. What do you want, Jill? Yeah, there's really no winning with Jill. Mm-hmm. She even um, describes, I think, actually one of my WTF moments for this was Jill talking to her mom about her dress. So they're, oh, they're yeah. going to a uh, bar mitzvah yeah. later mm-hmm. on. And she's like, you better get a nice dress, mom. Like, yeah, she's like giving her mom stipulations on the kind of dress that she wants, but then she's not going to go with her to get it. She yeah. just wants her mom to go buy her this dress. She's like, I want it to be long. I want a long dress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, calm down, kid. Yeah. Like, since when do you get to talk like that to your parents? Yeah. This book, I guess. <laughs> also, doesn't she like suggest borrowing Tracy's dress? Yes. I think so, yeah. I feel like my parents would have been like, oh, your friend has a dress. You want to borrow it? Awesome. Do it. Same. Yeah. And her mom is like, no, we have to get a new dress. Yeah. I mean, it does. What? It seems like it's um maybe like a, a perception issue because they're going to That's this bar true. mitzvah of their family friend who they clearly like kind of want Jill to be. Like, they, they're they doing that parent thing where you're like, when you guys grow up, you guys are going to be boyfriend and girlfriend, which uh, is yeah. the worst. Uh-huh. Um, Always the worst. I hate that. Yeah, and Jill doesn't like the kid, so they're going to his bar mitzvah, um, which apparently, presumably, he's also older then because she can't be 13. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I'm, I'm guessing they, like, we were talking about they seem like they're traveling somewhere, and it's a very fancy bar mitzvah. Yeah. Um, and so I'm guessing maybe it was, like, a thing of, like, you need to have a nice, pretty, like, new dress to go to the bar mitzvah so that you look mm-hmm. fancy, especially if they're trying to, like, do a weird arranged thing with her and the kids. <laughs> yeah. Just keep shoving them together. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. That never, yeah. parents, never works. Don't do this. Don't no, do this yeah. thing. Because typically, like, if you grow up with a kid, like, they are more your, like, sibling or your pal than anything else. Yeah. Like, don't do this. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Don't. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so, as you know, as we start to go through our delightful WTF moments through here, I think, you know, we covered some of them in the plot points because yes. it, the whole book <laughs> is just a giant WTF. But I think there's a couple worth revisiting, specifically around... Um, the weighing people yeah. in school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. What? Okay. So I get the scoliosis. I get it. Check for scoliosis. That's great. Mm-hmm. Check for lice. Nobody wants that. What What exactly is we the point? We did not get lice? checked for lice. Oh. Wait, oh. I don't think we did either. No. Unless there I was mean, like a concern that somebody had lice. Yeah. Yeah. But a- when I was in school, we never had like a lice scare. My sister did. They... Everyone threw, they went on a field trip and everyone threw their hats and coats in a pile and then, surprise, you all have lice. Oh, no. (laughs) And so they, like, got checked after that to, like, make sure that no one still had it. Like, a while later they got checked again, but, like, we never... Hmm. That was, like, a yearly thing in our school. Yeah. Yeah. Like My middle school definitely had the weighing thing, though, and it was in front of people. Oh. Yeah, you would line up, yeah. like, basically behind the scale, and so you would get on the scale, and they would, it's not like they weren't, like, telling you what your weight was. Yeah. They would yeah. say it, and, like, whoever would be, like, waiting and, and right there, and you'd be, like, in your... I don't know if this was just like because we did it in gym class, but like I remember being in my underwear in a tank top because they were feeling for the scoliosis oh, stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, so it's oh. like you're also in your skivvies, yeah, with like people watching you, and like it was always really awkward, and I always kind of felt like it was really antiquated because my school was really like old fashioned. Like we had like a this thing called like the luncheon where girls and boys would pull names out of a hat, so. So the girls would pull like a name out of the hat and it would be like, you've got Nicholas. And then you don't like that. And then you had to walk up to the stage, pull them down. You're dressed nice. You take them to a table and you give them lunch that you prepared. (gasps) Yeah. And the girls had to go first to show the boys how it was done. Of luckily for me. The disparity, like, there was, like, one fewer boy to girls at the time. Uh Uh-huh. And, bless, my (laughs) close friend Paul was the odd one out. And he ended up with two girls, and I was one of them. Yeah. So I just got to, like, pull my friend down the stage and, like, feed him spaghetti I made. But it was, like, 
the most uncomfortable thing I've ever had to deal with in school. And no one that I've ever met has had yeah. the same experience. Oh, yeah. No. So what? I wonder if that's just like being in a cons- like a conservative Christian small town, but yeah. like, whoa. Was this Oof. a public school? Uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I How mean, Cedar... That was seventh grade. Wow. Seventh grade. I wow. actually, it's crazy, but I hadn't even started menstruating yet. And they're like already trying to put me together with guys. And yeah. I was like, like this is the nope. worst thing you could do to me. But okay. That's also, because right. I was like, do I even like guys? They're yeah. kind of awful. Yeah. yeah. Right. But. And then they introduced the concept of polyamory and it was all great. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You got your little triad. So well, I, I, I had seen Angelina Jolie when I was nine, and I was like, mm, I don't well, know if guys are for me. Yeah. Like, Paul can hang out, but Paul like, was a good guy, though. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow, I'm I'm blown away by this. Like, yeah. I was uncomfortable with square wow. dancing in yeah, like oh. square dancing, a disproportionate amount of square dancing. So I was over prepared dancing. for square dancing and under prepared for many partners. things. Yeah. Square dancing and polka. Yes, you did polka. Yeah, yes. so we had a polka, polka unit school. and it was awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Actually. I'm like, so one of my good friends got married a couple of years ago and had a polka band. For like the first hour of her reception what's up Kristen? <laughs> um and it was awesome and i was like a superstar with everybody's moms because i <laughs> like nobody's nobody's dads would dance and yeah, so I, yeah. I danced with everyone's moms nice, nice. <laughs> Wait, was that the wedding with milk yes awesome <laughs> someone came around and offered us milk they had just like a oh pitcher of milk and they were like would anyone like a glass of milk <laughs> Which it's know. it's just a thing. Wisconsin. That's what you eat with dinner, dinner, but it's not what you do at weddings. <laughs> no, it's different. Oh Lord. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So anyway, we're all from pretty smallish towns. Yeah. Andrew, where are you from? Um, so I small size. Yeah, I started out in uh, Cudahy and then moved to Oak Creek. So I I definitely got a lot more of the weirdness. Like I went. Um, K through fifth grade, I went to a Catholic school, and that's where all of the buck wildery happened. Um, <laughs> and then I went to a, a public school in Oak Creek. So I have like kind of both sides of the the weird sort of secluded stuff, and then the weird public school stuff, mm, nice. and all yeah. the fun things. Yeah, good dose of both. Yeah, in there. Yeah. Yep. I was um, uh, from a very small town. Like there were four hundred people in my school total. Um, but I got bullied out of my school. Oh no! Yeah, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. Turns out, if you speak your mind, and uh, yeah, nope. The, just that's it. People that's don't it. like that. If you yeah. Surrender. Period. Full stop. <laughs> yep. I think at one point I was referred to as an incestuous pregnant lesbian with AIDS. Whoa! I know it was amazing. It was my sister's baby. That's... They just have a whole Whoa. bunch of like words that they don't understand. Yeah, oh, but no, all I strung that all together. together. Yeah. yeah, I I strung that all together. Okay. That was just separate. all the rumors that were okay. there. Um, and after you know getting like my tires slashed and stuff, I transferred to yeah, Wisconsin. Then instituted school choice, um, where oh. if you could. You know, even if you didn't live within there, you could go to another school. Um, so I could, once I got a car, I was like, I'm transferring <laughs> schools. Bye. Yeah, I'm out. And so I drove like 30 minutes to, to school every day just to be away from that. So. Sounds like a good choice. Yeah, yeah. it was oh, yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's it. On that note, I think, you know, anyway. that's just how we're going to end each of those. <laughs> yeah, on that <laughs> note. Until next week for the... For the comeuppance, will Jill finally learn her lesson? Huh? No. I'm just going to tell you no. right now, no. Probably no. not. <laughs> no, but that's okay. But you can hear more about this redonkulousness next oh, week, yes. Wednesday. Uh, thank you very much to Sexy Hackers for giving us this space in this awesome recording studio to play around in. Super cool. Sweet t-shirts. Uh, thank you very much to our guests, Sarah. Bianca and Andrea and I'm Laura and make sure to like and subscribe and you know what down there leave the comments we would love to hear from you guys I feel like this is going to inspire a lot of conversation let it out that's what the internet is for yeah yep (laughs) and we'll be here we'll see you guys next week Wednesday bye Bye. Bye. sexyhackers.com stream team